What's up guys, I'm Ace, and welcome back to another Gun Guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all the stats of every one of the weapons in COD World War II. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the three-line sniper rifle, which is the Mosin Nagant. Now, in real life, the Mosin Nagant was developed in the Russian Empire, and it fires a 7.62x54R round. This is one of the most iconic guns from World War I, as well as World War II, and it has been a long time coming in this game. It's nice to see that it's finally here. In COD World War II, we get a damage profile of 95, keep in mind this is before multipliers, and it's the multipliers that take you over that 100 damage threshold, and therefore make it a one-shot kill. Our rate of fire is 48 rounds per minute, and with rapid fire we can bump that up to 50 rounds per minute, keep in mind this is identical to the Car 98K in this game. Same thing goes with our one-hit kill area, this is identical to the Car 98K, if you shoot them anywhere but the legs, you will be getting a one-hit kill. Moving on to one of the more important stats with a sniper rifle, this is aim down sight time. With the three line, we get an aim down sight time of 450 milliseconds, which is tied with the PTRS for the slowest in the sniper rifle category. Our sprint throw time is also quite slow with this at 420 milliseconds, but that value is less relevant with the sniper rifle because it would only really apply to no scoping somebody out of sprint. As for movement speed, this is pretty standard for the sniper rifle category at 95%. Same thing goes with our aim down sight strafe speed. This is also standard for snipers at 40%. Getting into our magazine capacity, we have a capacity of 5 rounds with 25 in reserve, and with extended mags we can bump that up to 7 rounds with 38 in reserve. As for our reload add time, this is definitely different with this, you actually load it with a 3 round stripper clip, so this means you load 3 rounds at a time. Based on my testing, it takes 1.62 seconds per 3 rounds with this gun, and generally that's how I like to reload it, as I just reload the 3 rounds and I'm back in the fight, and 1.62 seconds is very quick for a sniper rifle. This brings us to idle sway, and as you can see here, it does have a lot of idle sway. It appears to be tied with the PTRS as well as the Springfield as the worst in the idle sway category for sniper rifles. And finally, the last stat we're going to be covering today before we get into classes and attachment recommendations, this is going to be aim assist. With the three line, this falls in line with the Car 98K, the Springfield, and the PTRS, where you only get aim assist if you're holding your breath. When you're not holding your breath, there is absolutely no aim assist whatsoever with this gun. So now let's get into my preferred attachments with this. First up, Ballistic Calibration. This is pretty much a must-have for me just because that idle sway is so high and you don't always have time to be holding your breath, so it's nice to have that Ballistic Calibration to cut down on the idle sway a little bit. Next, FMJ. I like using FMJ with this one because I tend to use this one more so as a traditional sniper rifle. It's not the greatest for quick scoping because it has that slower aim down sight time. So generally, I'll be hanging back a little bit more often, and when you're doing that, I find that you have more opportunities to shoot somebody through a wall. Maybe if there's a sniper that you can just see like his gun sticking through a window, you can just aim at the wall beside and shoot right through it to get the kill on him. Aside from that, I usually use extended mags as well, but rapid fire wouldn't be a bad choice. So getting into a couple example classes for you guys, this first one is that traditional sort of sniping class. This one could be substituted with any sniper rifle and it would still be a great sniping class. With this we're using the Mountain Division with the Lookout Basic Training. We've got Ballistic Calibration, FMJ, and Extended Mags. Our secondary is going to be a 9mm SAP with Extended Mags. Our lethal is an S-Mine so we can watch our back as we're sitting back and picking people off. And finally we have a Concussion Grenade for our tactical. This one's excellent for just hanging back, picking people off. It's great for counter sniping as well because you have that mountain division, so you won't ever have a name tag above your head when enemies are aiming at you. And Lookout allows you to see those enemy name tags at those longer distances for much easier target acquisition. Next up, we have one that's designed to be just a little bit more aggressive, just to change of pace with this. We're using the infantry division so we can stack up on attachments. And we're going to be once again using Ballistic Calibration, Extended Mags, Rapid Fire this time, and a 4X Sight. With the 4X Sight and also the Infantry Division, this allows us to strafe around corners, be a little bit more aggressive and up in the enemy's face. But of course, you still have to remember that the aim down sight time on this is painfully slow. Our basic training with this is going to be Duelist. We're going to be using the Enfield number 2 with steady aim as well as advanced rifling. This is just excellent for those really close quarter situations. It's a great secondary to swap to because you can absolutely dominate anybody up close with this even if they have a shotgun. Also with this, our lethal is going to be a sticky grenade and our tactical is once again a concussion grenade. So there we have it. That's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide. Of course, as always, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of the three-line sniper rifle in this game? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Let me know what you think. Personally, I don't see a place in this game for this gun. I really thought with my testing I'd find some sort of a redeeming quality with this, but I haven't found any. This is straight up a Car 98K with a worse aim down sight time and worse idle sway. There is absolutely no redeeming quality that I was able to find that makes this better than the Car 98K in any way whatsoever. 
As a result, if you're wondering whether or not you want to spend armory credits on it, I would not recommend that at all with the 3-line in its current state, because the Car 98 k is either equal to or better than the 3-line in every single category. That's not to say that this gun is completely unusable and terrible. Of course, you can still use it, you can get kills with it, you can do okay with it. It's just statistically completely outclassed by the Car 98 k one last thing to mention before we wrap the video up is if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link to the playlist down below. I am now caught up. I've covered every single gun that's currently in the game. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.